Five, four, three, two, one. It's the new Panic Room. It's the show other shows want to be, and the show that authors want to be on. Da! The all-new Panic Room Radio Show is brought to you by HellboundBooks.com. <laughs> well, 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 good evening. It is uh, Thursday night. It is the 20... You have to check it out. 25th of April already. And it is the new Panic Room episode 140. So, um, welcome listener um I, hopefully I, I, you know every one of these days it's sort of probably funny our listener died peacefully in his sleep or something and it's just me and Xtina waffling on all evening so uh, hopefully not hopefully there's, there's at least at least a couple of people listening which would be jolly which would be jolly but um 
Anyway, I'll tell you what, we were, we were doing, you know, and I was chatting about a, a rather interesting subject on the, uh, before the show, so I'm going to bring her on, and uh, we will continue the conversation. <laughs> Interesting things. First of all, I've got a, like the world's biggest bug bite on, on just above my ankle there, and it hurts. It really does hurt. So I'm going to whine about that for a little bit uh, during the evening. But um, the other <laughs> thing we were, we were talking dick pics, um, you know, and, uh, <laughs> good things or bad. I don't know. Maybe people could, could we should do a, a phony vote, you know, because um, <laughs> it must work for some people, you know, who's saying, you know, that. Whether I'm old fashioned, I don't know. But you know, I would never dream. But you, know, you say hello to somebody on right. Facebook, and text, you know. The, and I see it a lot. I see obviously a lot of you know some sort of female authors in, in the industry we're in, and they'll say you know, especially the, mm-hmm. those who write maybe something that's a little bit erotic or a little bit not that sort of thing, and they say people they'll say a request and they'll accept that. The next thing they've got a picture of somebody's knob. You know, yep, um, yep. Have, what, have on, on what planet? On what planet do these people <laughs> think that is a good idea? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm guessing. As it, as it, I as wonder. Just, funny enough, I, I have actually what's happened to me. Funny enough, I actually did get sent about a year ago. Somebody sent me a dick pic, which I found was highly amusing. Um, and it, I it was, to be fair, it was like the uh, the crocodile Dundee moment. Yeah, this guy sent me his dick. I sent one back. I said, "That's not a dick. This is a dick." I uh, never, never heard. I shamed him, shamed him because you know, um, you know, I don't like to brag, but I am quite, quite magnificent. But has it happened to you, Extina? It has. It has more times than I can count. And, oh, seriously? Um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, seriously. And, you know, there was actually, oh, uh, you know what? I have stories, <laughs> but I can't, I, I you know, you know, I, I, I shouldn't anyway. But, yeah, um, I definitely, th- there was actually one um, in- person that I, I, I can kind of say that I, I, I had respected up until then. And yeah. um, you know when I did, when I did not reciprocate, when I did not act like I was just excited beyond you know all I get out, um, he unfriended me and uh, w- wouldn't talk to me anymore. So you know he wouldn't tell me. Well, like, <laughs> I I, I, like I say, I I, 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 I would never dream of doing such a thing. And B, I just don't. And, is there any women that actually? Think, oh, I'm, this is the, he's the one. He's warm because you he, know, he's I, sent me a picture. He's wrinkled little old man acorn penis. Um, I can't imagine too much swooning going on over that. 
telling the truth. I wonder how how many guys get you know unsolicited I don't know titty pics or something like does that yeah, happen? Yeah, I've, 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 I've had those too. Actually, I've had a few. And it, again, I mean, it's funny. It's one of those things. Really, unless you're in the, the, that particular mood, you know, genital. They they're just it's not nice. It's not they, nice. Right. I right. don't want to see yeah. that. I mean, some unless some some, like, some some woman sent me one. I, at first, I thought she sent me a picture of an RB sandwich, but. I thought, don't. Oh, no. I mean, don't, no. No, first of all, don't. B, you know, it, it's not it's, it's not even a nice one, lady. You know, it, it's untidy. Yeah. You know, it, it, it don't. You know, I have, yeah. took, took, those, took those bits back in and just don't take pictures of it. Okay. <laughs> you know, even even the ones that I have received that have been, you know, you know, that one could be in, like, a magazine or something. It still didn't make me want the guy, you know? So that's that's the confusing part. Well, like, you know, hey, it you... was nice looking. It yeah. was, but... Yeah, okay. I expect it. Yeah. I expect it might be. But obviously, like, in the back you of your head, you, you, you're you obviously thinking, well, obviously it's attached to the sort of guy who would take a picture of it and send it to me. <laughs> so you, I'm yes. really not that yes, interested. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You know, there's yeah, a reason. Like, there's a reason job? that man invented yeah, good job. invented trousers. There is a reason we invented trousers. <laughs> it's to keep such things neatly tucked away and out of sight because nobody needs to look at those. Really, you know, something just to get excited about new going to a, go to nudist colony with the knob out. I mean, you know, it's popping around. No, <laughs> don't. I mean, if you want to go go to a you know, a sex yeah. cup, fine, you know, you want to go and do all of that. Not a problem, but, you know, it's like, uh-huh. oh, we're just, we're, we're just doing normal things naked. Well, why don't you just do normal things with some fucking shorts on? It's the same thing. Yeah, does yeah. It, does it matter? Why Definitely. Is it, why is, if these people never play, you can tell. I mean, the, 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 none of them are any, you know, in any shape. <laughs> well, that is a shape, obviously. But and they're, they're playing badminton, and they've never played badminton in their life ever. Suddenly, oh, I've got no clothes. <laughs> Don't just no. Don't just, just, no. just go to go to go to nudist colony, but keep some clothes on. And then it's just a colony, I suppose. Yeah, it does make you wonder. You know who? You know who has this worked on? You know and. Uh, they should see right there that they, they don't have a, a really good record in, or track record. So why do they keep doing it? Is beyond me. I, I really don't get it. It's it's it's, it's one but, of life's little know, mysteries. It's like it's like the pyramids, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I, Stonehenge. It's one of life's little mysteries. And I will say, I don't I I don't remember the name of it. I don't even know if I still belong to it. But there is a, a secret group on Facebook run by women who share these dick pics that we get from these strange guys, and Fantastic. we laugh at them. You know, we're like, yes. oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, what yeah. They should, what uh-huh. they should and, do uh, is, send, yeah. is, is send the picture back to whoever sent it with all the, you know, the derisory comments. That would be comments. brilliant. Because it, 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 might, it might stop oh, them. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it might stop them. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, you know what? There's even there's even some out there who do that, and they're married. You know that, and and you know it looks like a, a nice, wonderful marriage. Of course, you know it's not, but um, yeah, I I don't well, know. Well, if the guy is sending pictures like, his knob to random women, then maybe all is not well in that marriage. I'm guessing. I'm not. I'm no expert no, no, on that. I'm true. I'm quite. No, I'm quite crap at it. But, but you no. know, it, just just don't, don't. Maybe she thinks thing everything. Wonderful. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. So, or maybe she, maybe she's sending hamburger shots to random people as well. So it <laughs> kind of, kind of works out. Did you just send hamburger shots? I, I, oh I and it's, it's, it's remarkably not the first time I've said that on the show. So um, there's, there's that. Oh, there is that. I, you know, I'm in the mood for an RB sandwich now, sweetheart. You know, um, I, if the boyfriend's listening, you know, we need Arby's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you just no, you're gonna sit go there. Look, you're gonna sit there looking at that beef sandwich. <laughs> I'm not eating that. I'm no. I just can't. Jim spoiled Arby's for me forever. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Right, and you know, I, I had been in the mood for a beef and cheddar, but I don't know now. <laughs> 
Oh, no, that's oh, coming. Oh, cheese. Oh, no. No. In the secret sauce. In secret sauce, too. Oh, okay. Stop it now. Enough. Enough, <laughs> enough, enough. You started it. <laughs> I'm starting oh, God. perfectly <laughs> adult debate about, you know, dick pics and Barbies and hamburgers, yeah. and then you're going to spoil it. Spoil it now. I, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I'm to blame for that, but <laughs> you just lowered the top down just one. It plummeted into the depths yeah. of depravity, unfortunately. But uh, anywho, <laughs> anywho, moving swiftly along, you said trying, trying to sort of, trying to rescue the show. What, what have we got coming up this evening, right. next, Dina? We have an exciting show, you know, but I, I'm not sure about how they feel about following up the dick pic and the, you know, Arby's. They've probably talk, gone. But, They're um, probably just not going to come on now. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Patrick and, and Virginia, I wouldn't blame you after, after that tirade of filth. <laughs> right. Tirade of filth it is. I mean, just, just um, not call for. <laughs> not call for. Let's see. This week on our show, we have returning guest horror author Patrick James Ryan. Oh, he's and, a favorite. Uh, we he's have a favorite. Paranormal yeah, he is. He is. And uh, for our first guest tonight, we have paranormal and sci-fi writer Virginia Johnson. I'm oh, excited to talk oh, to her. Me and her been... Yeah. yeah. Did you, oh, go ahead. Should we, yeah. Shall we bring her on now? <laughs> should we? Should we before, before you, you open your mouth should. again? Go on, then. Thank you, we producer. should. We should. Okay. Paranormal and sci-fi writer Virginia Johnson. Woo! <laughs> Virginia, are you there? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, we're good. And first of all, I would like to apologise on behalf of Extina for her um, her potty mouth earlier. I was just totally. I just no. I just I'm 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 ashamed to be associated with her this evening. I have to say. Oh, she's lying. <laughs> I've got folders and folders of dick pics, and I take oh, really? her right. And if you for a male author, I guarantee you, they also get pictures. <laughs> oh, I was wondering. <laughs> yes, and well, get pictures regularly, and it's it's alarming. I mean, I PA for an author who, you know, when he would get them, it would be like, the hell did I just see? And why? Like, what is going on? And I, I was like, wow, this is, I'll never look at you the same. But cool. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you, do you, do you right. I mean, do you, do you categorize them? Do you, you know, by size or shape or, I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you arrange them on your hard drive? Pardon Some the of them are like, I, well, oh, yeah. perhaps you only put, you only put certain ones on the hard drive, the others go on a floppy disk. Like, no, I arrange them based on which ones are the most, like, horrid. And those are the ones I send the most. So when somebody sends a mm-hmm. pic, I send one back, like, here's mine. Let's pass. Nice. And some are just sad. Some are just sad. Where you do have to share them with somebody else. Like, you have to, like, send them yes. to a friend. And then that friend sends them to more friends. And then it just becomes a virtual <laughs> penis parade. It yeah, is is. I think it's, 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 yeah. sadly, it's what some of, some of these guys... It's probably what they want, actually. Oh. They want lots of people to see their, their, their little willies, you know, and it, it's sad. <laughs> I find it very, very sad, personally, you know, unless I'm missing out. Maybe I should, I, I should do it more often. Maybe that, cause I, 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 get, I, get, I, get, I get friend requests from, you know, from male and female, from, you know, authors and the publisher and the people in the business and, and whatnot. And it's funny, I actually have a policy. Any, anyone with lower than mutual friends, I, I automatically, I just, because obviously, you know, but these scammers can get round that. You know, I got one the other day, like 58 mutual friends, and I recognize that. Brilliant. And literally, I accepted it. And within minutes, I've got links yeah. to these, these mm-hmm. porn sites. I know, I, I, you know, if I wanted to look at porn, to be fair, I would. You know, not, I, you know I'm not prudish just for that. Yeah, but just don't send that. Yeah, don't pretend to be a friend, because then you've got to go through all the rigmarole of unfriendly, because you only have 5,000 friends to go at, and I'm getting close to that. And I, I don't want, I mean, yes, I'm sure, yeah. you know, Makumbe from, you know, Zimbabwe is, is nice, and it's very good of her to show me her, <laughs> to show me her boobies, but I, to be fair, no. 
I'm not interested. No, I'm not going to save your money. I'm not. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> Villages burnt you know, down. Just there's, stop there's pestering me. Yeah, there's a guy in Nigeria somewhere that's got twenty-eight million dollars in his house because no one will return his emails. Just saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I saw that. Well, yeah. I wonder if he's he may be inter- He may be related to the Nigerian. I've just sent three thousand dollars to because he's going to send right. me some yeah. <laughs> four million he's got in a, in a in a bank account, and he just needed three grand to to sort of or something so as soon as that comes i'm off seriously I'm <laughs> don't you will not well, see I me just... for just with my with my, G- my nigerian <laughs> millions right <laughs> you know i just had an email was it yesterday i think that i posted about it i got an email that you know said that this guy was going to upload my masturbation <laughs> video if i didn't give him mm-hmm. I was like two thousand dollars or something, and I'm thinking, you know, I, I, as you said, uh, James, who hasn't seen that already? Come on, now. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, everybody, everybody who knows you has seen that anyway. So it's no, no big, There's, no shock, right, really. Right. It would be. <laughs> what would be shocking is if they, if they threaten to post a video working during the day. That. <laughs> that would be worth two for anybody not to see that because that would be just horrifying. That's true. Mm. Yeah, it would be. You know, I don't even get up till noon, it's, so I don't know. Like Steve, you know, I she's get a, awake, awake before noon. You know, it's just like what? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. true. <laughs> so, so Virginia, Virginia, he's not here to talk about dick pics. Well, it might be. I don't know. Um, she's here to talk to us about. Her, um, <laughs> Secondary silence, and it has. Exteen has actually bothered to write the tagline the letter, and it, uh, he needed her for strength. She needed him to survive. So, uh, tell us a bit more about it, Virginia. Well, uh, secondary silence uh, kind of spawned from you know I, I really wanted to do a vampire book, but I don't like the the theory around vampires um, or fictional characters per se because um, I started writing. Um, more mystery, thriller, and horror, um, but a female serial killer. And then I went into, I really kind of wanted to do this vampire thing, but I was more in this ghost writing, like not ghost writing, but writing about ghosts. And so I really, I wanted (laughs) Mm -hmm. to merge the vampire and the ghost theory together. And uh, Mm -hmm. you're, you know, kind of thinking, who's done this? Like vampires and ghosts, and, and why would they need each other? Like for what? purpose and right. mm-hmm. that secondary oh. silence about where you know this, this this girl her name's Ashley and she died and basically in this book you're she's assigned to a vampire and she's basically seeing for them and and my vampires don't have super strength they don't have they don't run fast they don't sparkle um you know they're just mm-hmm. undead mm-hmm. or unalive they're just they're just un- un- undead undead and they they drink blood yeah unalive. And so the, she, the, the book is all about these horrible, horrific visions that she's seeing, and she can't figure out why he would send her these, these visions to see for him um, to try and figure out what, you know, what's going on in the city, like trying to protect their town. And she starts seeing these things, and it, the story tells a story about um, the things that get in our way, you know, drunk driving and um, uh, bad doctors and nurses and child abuse and it, it's bullying. It like it kind of attacks all of them in this super twisty vampire ghost paranormal horror. Like it's, I don't know, it's something a little bit different that I can link together mm-hmm. and, and it was cool. Excellent. Excellent. I, we, we, I like different. I mean, like you say, I mean, the, you know, so we in our line of business, you know, we, we do see a lot of, you know, so zombies again vampires again and and you know right. uh, it's yeah uh, you get right. you know a lot of them are just, it's just a lot of the tropes are just done to death you know and, and it's well could we could we think of something else please <laughs> that's where i want to get away from because like somebody pointed out i wrote two vampire books and that was in uh-huh. you know secondary silence and secondary disaster which are the same world can be read separately but secondary silence they and both they ever my readers didn't even catch up to the fact until after I told them my vampires never fed. There there was oh, no wow. feeding. Yeah. There was no 
like bloodlust. There was no like it, it was it, it's a story about a vampire and a ghost. You don't need mm-hmm. to know that a vampire is feeding because guess what? Vampires feed. Yeah. Like we don't right know right. Looking the bathroom. Guess what? She peed three times during that scene. Like you know, it's kind of <laughs> right. that, that, the normalcy of, of being around, like, what if vampires existed and lived next door? Would you know? Because they're not abnormal. They're a normal human. So mm-hmm. that's really what I want to stick to. And just having that ghost aspect, because I really kind of like that more ghost version of mm-hmm. life. Because, I mean, everybody's haunted by something. And to have something there that's more paranormal um, was, a, was a drive for me. And, I mean, I think I wrote that book in four days five writing days. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it was one of those things, like once I started, it was just, it was there, there was the book and in the story. And it was trying to figure out why a ghost would need, why a vampire would need a ghost. And that was the biggest problem. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked. I out. can see that. Yeah. But again, it's, it, it, it's, <laughs> it, it's wonderfully different, you know, and I guess once you get that out, everything fell into place. Right. So that was, uh, you know, the girls at work helped me a lot in trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do. So I can I can thank them for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of um, vampires and ghosts, made me think of uh, being human. Um, have you either one of you watched the uh, watched that show? Do you remember that? Yeah. Being human. I, I remember. Yeah. I never saw it. Is it good? It's a great show. I. It, Yes, that was the vampire werewolf ghost to live together. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 No, I don't no, want to see that. Different. I don't want to see that. Yes, there was a UK version no, they had and a two US. different versions. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. I did not see. I did not see the UK version, but I did watch the uh, the the, ver- the version well, over here. Probably, and I have to say, the, you probably found the UK version was better. You know, I've heard it, the, you, yeah. you know what I hear. I hear that. Are. Yeah, but I've only. Always seen I've only seen the U.S. version, and I loved it. I I had such a crush on Aiden, the you know oh. the vampire. Oh my God, I thought I yeah. I loved him. I did. I I totally fantasized about him quite a you know biting me very often. So <laughs> I, yeah, it was I, a great I show. I really too. liked it. <laughs> and you know the vampire part, yeah. you know, and and that was the draw. I mean, really, and I I but I didn't want similar to that aspect, I guess. You know, where Aiden was trying to be human, you know, and although he did kill right. and all the other dads and everything under the sun, it was, that's kind of the vampire <laughs> you would picture in a normal everyday life. Like there's no Dracula hanging out in a castle somewhere, he you has, know, not likely right yeah, now. But yeah. He had a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and this, they don't necessarily interact the same way the show did um, in human life, but it's, you know, they, they owned a house. It was protected. You know, it was more like the originals without all the superpowers. You know, it was more like uh, uh, this was his purpose. And then the girl, you know, she, like, it goes more into when you die. You know, where does your soul really go? Uh, you know, go to heaven, do you go to hell? Mm-hmm. Or do you have another purpose? And the whole part of the book is that this this extra purpose of how she got involved in stopping so many bad things from happening by but bad things were still happening and it was kind of showing mm-hmm. like oh there might be this paranormal entity that although bad things happen, they're preventing work so that's really what's awesome. happening here silence yeah i i want to hear more do you have an excerpt for us do you have a reading i do i do <laughs> my elf read the prologue just because it kind of sums it all up so I will uh, I'll read a little bit Um, so this is from Ashley's point of view who is my ghost in secondary silence and um, I'll just start with that so when sight is unseen there's a moment of clarity that's lost to the darkened void trust and deception becomes risks that one must take in order to survive the chaos of the night to be the trusted one, there's a level of responsibility that you must consider sacred. The truth that you are meant to keep are the difference between life and death. I am not at risk of death, nor or life for that matter, being the ones that I've sworn to protect keep me the secret as I do them. Moving on, easier to deal with. 
The higher powers at hand make damn sure that you are sent in the right direction, even if it means crushing your dreams as they decide your fate. As the soul begs to stay connected to the body, you are left to fight for life in heaven or hell, or so we thought. I've learned that there are eternal fates worse than hell. The devil may reign on an apparent underworld, but the real monsters live next door. Good girls go to heaven, and sinners descend to be tortured by Satan. I repeated to myself as the soul refused to move on. I could feel myself being both torn from my existence, yet anchored to the same realm. The pain was momentary as I slipped away, just far enough to dull the fiery burn to my flesh. My heart stopped pounding erratically against my chest as I accepted the inevitable death to my body. Fear raced through me while I realized that everything I'd been taught was a lie. We are unable to accept death in a form of reward, or we are able to accept death in a, as a form of reward if we live by the way of the Bible. Unfortunately, people like me don't move on. We don't get to be judged. All of the good that was done as a human is void as I'm forced to begin a new life as a stranger to my friends and nothing more than a ball of energy to the more sensitive. Everyone has a future, a reason for life. The task of doing the right thing is relative to the person that defines the right thing. I was gifted an asshole with entitlement. My deciding angel made it clear that I would serve another purpose on earth. My time was up in the person that I was and would now be the person that I had to be. Good or bad, there was nothing stopping me from doing the right thing. As time passed, I became more and more convinced that I'd been forgotten and my hope for everlasting eternity crumbled at the door of the only person to accept me for what I was. A girl with nothing to live for with an ability that had gone untapped. My future held more than wandering the earth as a peasant while, life, or while living the life that I couldn't avoid until now. I like that. I want to hear more. I want. I want his story now. I want to know. You know, how did he? Be- did you get into that in the book? Like how he becomes a vampire, or um, is it just he is a vampire? <laughs> he. He. Well, he is a vampire. He now. So Thaddeus is my main character in um in this book, and he's a really genuinely nice guy. Like he does not mm-hmm. want harm. Does not want pain and suffering. Um, let's just say Ashley was lucky. <laughs> when you look at secondary disaster, <laughs> where <George> was a <laughs> um, You know, really, like the two of them were never, a, like, they, there was this budding relationship, but he understood, like vampires are vampires. And his story was more about how he'd, you know, been born into the vampire world. Um, and it's, basically mm-hmm. followed in the same path as other vampires before him where she uh, died on earth versus being bitten or born into this world and you know her job is basically to keep him safe and, and to stay alive and his job is to protect her from others that are trying to dull the ghost you know because if others if the darker uh-huh. side of the vampire world can take out these people that are helping the good side, um, they will have the control right. over the world. Or they're trying to prevent this, this. So you get two stories. You get Ashley's story, which is what she's seeing and how she's she's dealing. And you get Thaddeus' side, which is they're trying to protect human life. And if it means seeing these things down through the, a ghost, that's what they need. Well, once the ghosts are gone, then they eat and they can destroy Earth as it is. And so it kind of plays this internal battle between both of them because they're both good people living two completely mm-hmm. different worlds. That's so, awesome. I do I do really like how, how unique it is. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen anything like that out there. That's pretty cool. You know, they're, like James mentioned, you know, when, you know, we, we see the same thing over and over again when it comes to, like, the vampires and, and you know, werewolves and, you know, zombies and stuff like that. So it is really cool to uh, have something I, I like, totally I mean, it, different. It, you know, you said it bordering on philosophy, and, and I like that. Funny enough, it just brings to mind, um, I mean, it's in my mind because obviously we've got the sequel coming out shortly, which is uh, Carlos Colón's uh, Sangre, The Color of Dying, which again is, is vampire, uh, but it's yeah. done in such a unique way. And from, nicely from the point of view of the vampire, it's not 
you know, flopping through I windows. Love Nikki, I the do. And, you know, Nikki, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the guy, he's a real guy with real problems, who became a vampire really through no fault of his own, and he's just going around and robbing blood banks and that, and it's just a really grubby, gritty, he sees his wife move on, you see all that, the pain and the heartache that goes, he, 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 he paints the picture beautiful, and I, 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 you know, what, what you're doing here is, it's nice, you know, you, you, you bring fresh, pardon the pun, you bring bringing fresh blood to the owner, which is, uh, I applaud you for, well done, mm -hmm. well done, it's not easy. Yeah. You know, it's, that's more of what I've kind of always gone for is that, but what else, you know, I'm, even now I'm, I'm finishing up a co-write with, you know, um, a, a, a new to me author who accepted a, basically a dare in some post somewhere on Facebook. And he was like, yeah, let's write. I'm like, all right, cool. And he's like, what are we going to write about? And we talked about, you know, like demons and, and that stuff. And it was like, but who makes them? Who makes a demon? Well, I, 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 te no, technically, you know, demons are all. De I can answer this question. Demons are not. Demons have never been human. <laughs> that is the whole point of demons. They, they are. They have always been. They have never been human. So, right. there you go. Carry on. Uh, yeah. Well, we just took like taking that <laughs> when you can take somebody and just create a demon. You're making like it's like taking good girls and turning them awful. Um. You know, but it, it's uh, in a different way. Right. You know, like, but sure, there's demons and there's 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 ghosts and there's vampires. But what if? What if they weren't bad? What if they weren't the fear? Mm -hmm. What if they weren't the mm -hmm. top of us? You know, that's kind of where I, my brain takes me, which is how can I not be like everybody else? <laughs> no, right. that's great. You know, it reminded. Oh, I mean, we we see very excellent. I mean, we say we we you know, I'm not you know criticizing too much, but we we see. We get a lot of submissions, obviously, through for Hellbound Books, and you know, people they they, they you know, just rewrite, you know, they, they rewrite The Walking Dead or they rewrite, you know, Interview the Vampire yeah. or yeah. Dracula or whatever, you know, and it's just like literally within the first few pages, you know, you, you if my brain's switched around, this is this is this. Funny enough, actually, we're, we're again, it's another one we'll be we'll be bringing out in the next month or two. Um, which, I'm a big big fan of werewolves, and everybody who listens to the show will know I'm I'm, I'm a werewolf guy. <laughs> And this, uh -huh. this guy, uh, he's called, um, what the hell is it called? Invasive Species. And it is the most original web book since I, I've read Mongols recently, which is brilliant, and Howling from back in the early 80s. And, and again, wow. what got me was werewolves, but it was different. It was a different angle, it was a different look and spin. And I mm. love all that. Right. You know, it has to be because it's so. You know, you've got the movies, you know, they're churning out. There's another Marvel movie I'm reliably informed of. Seriously, you all get excited about it. I I mean, I, I get confused because I think, oh, it's an Iron Man movie, but hang on, the Hulk's in it and fucking Wonder Woman. And who's that bloke? Captain, <laughs> Captain America's suddenly in it with his frisbee. And it's just, well, what? You just have all of them. You have all of them. And it's all CGI. Maybe I'm getting old, you know, the, all, the, all the CGI stuff just bores me to tears. Absolutely right. bores me to tears. It just, I just can't be doing with it. Yeah. And that's just it, you know, and then that's how I write. I just write what else, like something else. Like, what's the point? What's the point in redoing the yeah. same thing over and over? Why yeah. don't you make it fun for somebody, you know? And I don't care if I sell one book or five. Yeah. I mean, I don't care. Somebody else right. has got to be a I really, on a fair. I really like what you said about, you know, just because it's a vampire, just because it's a ghost doesn't mean, you know, that he he or she is evil. And, uh, you know, yeah. it made me think of uh, a line in um, in, in Buffy. In, in There was a line in Buffy once where um, I think it was when Angel was bad. And um, somebody said, you know, just because he's a demon right now, just because he's, you know, evil doesn't mean he's lying. You know, whatever he was saying, you know, they're all like, right. well, he's just lying. Well, just because he's evil doesn't mean he can't tell the truth, you know? And I thought that was pretty, uh, that that kind of, in my mind was like, wow, they're right, you know? <laughs> so that well, was, I'm a huge Buffy fan. So. <laughs> it's everybody thinks of vampires, they're, they're all evil and they're going to kill everybody and they're going to, they're going to, no, not, mm -hmm. why? Just because Dracula did it or just because Anne Rice decided that's how it was going to go or, 
No, to me. Well, I mean, I think right. to be fair, to be fair to Dracula, you know, I mean, he needed to eat. I mean, there's no different, really. Yeah. You know, okay, he was sucking, draining blood out of, of virgins and blah blah. blah. Um, right. It's no, no different. I mean, you know, we 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 have and people on our behalf will. You know, they kill cows and chickens and and all the rest of it, so we can eat. And they they, they are eating. This is why I like you know like some of the werewolves. Yep. They, they are not evil. You know, that they they just need to feed, and and that's that. I mean, you know, tapeworms. You know, would you say a tapeworm is evil? I mean, it, it, it's it's just it's in your it's in your lower intestine. Uh, sorry, I'm small intestine doing its thing and minding its own business and surviving and doing yeah. what it does. It's, it's not inherently evil. Right. And so that's kind of mm -hmm. just a take I wanted to give, which was, mm -hmm. you know, like ghosts exist for a reason. Like I gave a ghost a reason and vampires could exist because, well, I wanted to write vampires. <laughs> no, hey, fine. <laughs> I not love a problem. Vampires. <laughs> yeah. No, I love I, vampires. I like, I like a good vampire. In fact, one of my, one of my, in fact, probably my, probably, yeah, for my, 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 top favourite Stephen King book is Salem's Lot. Um, again, he, he did right. it differently. Mm -hmm. I actually read an article, apparently James Wan is slated to do another remake of Salem's Lot. Just with remakes already. Wow. You know, we know what happened. Yeah, you know, that's it's the nothing. third time it's been filmed. Just, just don't. Go do something different, you know? Um, yep. But again, it, uh, it was yeah. just uh, the vampires taking over a small town. You know, and it, it was done so incredible. The book was just absolutely creeped me out. It was the first Stephen <laughs> King novel I read, and it was like, got me hooked. It was just phenomenal. Yep. It was good. It was really good. Um, what is your uh, opinion on Twilight, Virginia? Oh. oh. <laughs> I think I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a Twilight I Twilight fan. So Twilight is actually the reason I started reading again. Yeah. Like I haven't read a book since mm -hmm. high school until I read Twilight. And and it's only because um, the eclipse had come out and I'd watched the first three, but I needed to know the end. So I had to read the book to read Breaking Dawn. Uh, um, so I was a, I was <laughs> a fan. Um, I have to say it. I'll admit it to anybody who says it. Uh, it I was a fan of Twilight. Um, but there's just too many anomalies that you were just like, why would your skin sparkle? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like I know. <laughs> it was, like, See, okay, I'm it was, also, I was a Twilight. Yeah, I was a Twilight fan. I read the books. I watched the movies, and I thought they were great. As a matter of fact, I'm, you know, making the boyfriend watch them now. He's, I think we're up to uh, the Breaking Dawn and Breaking Dawn 2. We have to watch those still. And um, I loved them. I really did. I, I would, you know... If I'm, you know, when I'm sick or something, I'm like, let's do a marathon of Twilight. You know, I mean, I, I did. Yeah. I love them. Um, so, yeah. And it, it is, you know, a, a little younger. You know, I mean, they're in you know, high school, you know, in, in stuff. And so you yeah. definitely have that whole teenage angst thing going on. But uh, I, I liked it. I did. And I thought the writing was decent, you know. I mean, a little. But, you know, again, you know, she's writing to, like, high school kids. So it's going to be a little you know, right. younger, you know, so, yeah, 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 yeah so, so I, 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 I was Twilight. definitely, I'm not a Twilight fan, oh, yeah, when I are you a team, team Edward or um, Team Jacob? What's that? Oh, oh Team oh, Edward I, or Team Jacob? Oh, Team Edward. <laughs> I am too, you know, I love Jacob, I do, I love Jacob, but um, okay, for Jacob Bella, I was Team Edward all the way. So it was Jacob, Jacob the werewolf. werewolf. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not keeping. I'm not keeping up. I'm, a, I'm not keeping up I, at all. Uh, I was a team Edward. I was like, wow, this guy finally deserves happiness. Me too. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I think him and Bella were good together. They were, even though I love Jacob. I did. Um, but yeah. you know, it, it was it was always supposed to be her and Edward. Um, well, I yeah. hate to say this, but we are out of time for our first segment and. I'm thinking we have to have Virginia back, and we're just gonna, you know, go through yeah. all the list of of the vampire vampire movies and 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 vampire, you know, TV shows, and discuss, you know, what we like best and stuff. And uh, so you have to promise to come back and see us. I will. Just let me know when you want me. Yay! Okay, definitely. <laughs> 
system. Well, thank I you. Would yes, I, I, was, you. Uh, I was yeah. I was expecting to see, to see something there, but so, so where where can we uh, where just quickly <laughs> where where can we find online, Virginia? Where can you find me? Online. Uh, if you have online. a website, uh, and, yeah. yeah. No, no, well, you know, where can we get someone to come to your house? Um, no, I, my, well, <laughs> I'm not a name, so you can find me if you want. Um, you can find me at my uh, website is authorvirginiajohnson.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, same name, um, Twitter, Instagram, that stuff I've never checked. So other than that, that's where you'll find me. Right there, we did. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. I'll get you links put up on our Facebook page. So if anybody wants to stalk you, then go there and do it. And uh, again, thank you so much for coming on the show, and I can't wait to have you back. Okay. Right, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you for joining us. And we will be right back okay. after these messages. <laughs> Radio Show is sponsored by Hellbound Books, purveyors of all manner of dark fiction. You can find the publisher along with links to all their available works across platforms at hellboundbookspublishing.com. Hellbound Books is proud to be the first in the indie publishing business with a very own app on both Google Play and the App Store. In the mood for something steamy to read, check out new erotica author Jennifer Lynn's website at jenniferlynnerotica.com. You can find James at his website, www.jameslongmore.com, and Xtina has an author page found on the Help on website. Don't forget to follow the Panic Room Radio Show on social media. Our Facebook page, unofficial, the Panic Room Radio Show, Twitter at Panic Room Radio, our YouTube channel, the new Panic Room Radio Show, and come visit our website at www.panicroomradio.com. <laughs>
Welcome back to part two. Yeah, well, hello, welcome back. Are you, are you there, Exine? Are you used to this? I am here. Yeah. No, I thought you meant to be off for an Arby's or something. <laughs> No, no, I I was dancing in my seat, but um, you know, no, I I'm I have not heard that for a I've, long time. <laughs> I'm Sorry, gonna go try on. to forget the whole Arby's talk. Yeah, I'm gonna try to forget and block out the whole Arby's talk. You know, until you know the, the next time I'm there, and hopefully it doesn't spring into my mind. And that would be terrible. You know, I picture terrible. what did you call? It? What did you call it? A hamburger shot? <laughs> hamburger shot. That's so, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, my lord. <laughs> lord, oh lord. That's lordy. something. Yeah. Lordy, lordy. Yeah, anyhow, when, anyhow. When, hmm? when, I'm going to do this challenge. What's new, pussy cat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's new, pussy cat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, Exteda, pussy cat, what is new? Um, silence. Yeah, I'm going to ask silence because you have no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> there's some, wait, there's some stuff and things, right? There's stuff there's some and things, things that are new. Stuff and things. We have, tomorrow, <laughs> oddly enough, we have two new releases. We have The Dead Room by Luke Walker and Night Shade by Jason Paul. Uh, Luke is a, uh, he's supposed to be about 900. He's so prolific, is Luke. He's 900 um, novel with us, um, and it's it's a doozy as well. <laughs> Jason's it is, is, uh, it is. It, it, his debut novel, as a debut novel, is phenomenal. So, uh, so we have that. We have just announced. Um, uh, I've, <laughs> and I, I, I do like do like the um, uh, the, 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 the artwork. Yeah, uh, Roadkill Four, Volume Four, Texas Horror. By Texas writers. So any authors listening who are not from Texas, tough shit. You can't, you can't uh, submit. So. <laughs> but I can because I'm actually in Texas. So there, so I'm going to do that. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, we've just announced that, and uh, we've got some. Um, yeah, we we got next couple months is going to be busy for us. It's been but a quiet start to the year, quite deliberately. Yeah. But um, we're 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 now coming back with a right. back. To, Whiz bang, whiz bang, and an Arby sandwich. So, um, <laughs> oh my god, I'm, obs- I'm obsessed. Man. I, 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 I have a mental, a mental image <laughs> dancing behind my eyes that, that really shouldn't be there. I just do <laughs> but it's fine. So, so I'm I just put, to, put together the artwork for the uh, the, the mock up artwork for the, the new Roadkill, and uh, we've got Brett McCormick who um, guest edited um, Schlock Horror for last year and he's guest editing our um, Toilet Zone anthology this year. Terrific, terrific <laughs> guy. And he said, I, I said, well, what do, you, what do you want for the artwork on this one? He said, well, let's have a squashed armadillo. And I thought, well, I'm just going to turn it on his head. So I've just got this, this really healthy, unsquashed armadillo on the front. And I think he's awesome. I just love it. I just I, I just <laughs> throw it on there just for the mock up and Brett loves it. Oh yeah, yeah. He said, "Oh no, squash these there." <laughs> yeah, my other idea is of an armadillo <laughs> driving a, a big eighteen ton truck, eighteen ton truck, oh, um, nice. running yeah. running over people. <laughs> that would have been fun. Maybe, maybe do that for Roadkill Five actually. But uh, <laughs> funny enough, there's, a, there's an exotic pet store yeah. not far from where we. Where I um, actually buy frozen rats for my snakes from them, and they actually have like you can buy go and buy an armadillo, which is why nice. uh, you you can find them running around here. I mean that's what they do. Yeah, exactly. Just just go outside and go out. To, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't think I'd want an armadillo. I I think that I I, I can't imagine they'd be very cuddly. So, <laughs> and you know you that's know, kind of why I have a pet. Well. I can pet them. Fascinating. Uh-huh. Well, to be fair, I, I, I have like an 11, 12 foot uh, Burmese pie. To be fair, very cuddly. I mean, they, they are very, very cuddly, really? but not, not in a good way. Um, it's funny if we, we had him out, uh, out there because it was cleaning his cage out and he didn't want to go back in. We wrapped his um, body around my arm and I could feel my hand going uh-huh. numb. 
hit you within within seconds. Wow. Because he just gripped it and he just, that powerful. And literally my feet, I got, you know, after like, we found him, I'm surprised, got him off and hit him back in the cage again. Because one of these, he doesn't want to come out, doesn't want to go back in, which is awkward. Um, and I actually got pins and needles <laughs> in my finger after that. It's only for like a minute or two. Like, literally the circulation was just, just bang, gone within Wow. You, know, yeah. you can see yeah. why people have a few drinks with these things, put one around the neck, and then the next thing is the, you know, the, the one of Virginia's ghosts. <laughs> that would be a cool one, Arch. That would be... I, I wish right? you was, oh, if you're still listening, Virginia, if you're equal to the book, you need a guy who died showing off with his pet python. And I don't mean his trouser python, I mean his <laughs> real python. Um, <laughs> Um, so um, there you go. There's a, there's a, 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 a story. There's a story, <laughs> story out for somebody there. But um, so uh, now we've, we've, we've I've embarrassed you because you don't know what's going on. Um, what, is, is that it? Are we done? Can I can I go to bed now? Is it, what, what happens? What happens now? No, no. We have our second guest. Um, he's returning, which is awesome. I, I just love it when they want to come back. And mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that maybe they had too many drinks the first time around and, and didn't really remember. Maybe, you know, maybe the, it's the, like, the, the, the you know, we, we were taught that, you know, the, the human brain or the, the female brain, you know, and it's kind of ironic when you think about it, but the female brain forgets, you know, you go to a child where it's all horrible and painful and that's it. The brain forgets. Yeah, yeah. Race that. But it, yeah, it's kind of ironic because the female brain never forgets. Ever. <laughs> right. uh, so it's one of those, I don't know whether to believe that. They might be able to forget the sheer horror <laughs> and agony of childbirth, <laughs> but they'll never forget something you did after a few drinks by mistake 10 years ago. Right. That right. Keeps, coming, keeps coming back. Keeps coming back. So I don't know. <laughs> Women. Women, make your mind up. So, um, why don't you, right. uh, I, <laughs> I take an even bit more for myself, uh, introduce just our, our second guest, Dina. Yes, sir, our second I mean, guest, uh, returning. Don't you, I mean, I, you know, I do. it's nice, <laughs> the listener likes it when you join in, but, you know, it, just knowing you in <laughs> many ways. His returning guest, horror author Patrick James Ryan. Woo! Patrick, yes, sir. Patrick? Hi, can you guys hear me? Oh, we can now. Hello. How there are you doing, he is. Sir? Yeah. There he is. Hey, it, is a, it is a pleasure to be back with the beautiful and talented Extina Marie and the handsome and talented James Longmore. I, I am excited. Oh, thank you. We are excited to have you back. That last, this is your third outing. I think the first was um, your third outing or second, because I know you obviously the uh, we had the the night it got out, which is still a favourite of mine, I have to say. And then it was the maggots under the under the porch, or were they on the yeah. porch? Yeah, yeah, that's they were under right. it, weren't they? Again, another yeah. classic. So, what what are you, what have you got for us this time around? So I digressed a little bit from novel writing and it dabbled in a little bit of poetry when I did the, the short story collection, Blood Verse. It seems like poetry is a bit of a lost mm -hmm. art and people don't really like to read poetry, mm -hmm. but I see some awesome poems on social media and Facebook. So I took the ones from Blood Verse, topped it off and rounded it out to an even 20. I uh, reached out to the folks at Dead Man's Tome and they published... Uh, this little collection called Blood Prose, the, Bl the Poems of Blood Verse. And it's kind oh. of a compendium. I, I dab a little bit and go back to medieval times with a few of the poems. I had to write one about a monster on the English moors. I uh, did one with a little bit of irony about a hunter where a grizzly bear has an interesting encounter with a hunter, so no spoilers. Also did a couple of satire on, uh, one was on obesity, since we seem to have an epidemic worldwide with that, and also pyromania. And James, I know you love this one. I had to get a werewolf one in, and I also did a Yay! vampire one. Oh, I did one on oh, a serial killer. <laughs> I did one on a Civil War slave, and also did one about the proverbial little boy on the farm that finds the monster in the well. So kind of a, a diverse collection of time wow. frames, periods, and themes, so hopefully a little bit of, of something for everyone. I was about to say that. You, you've actually yeah. covered all the bases. That is fantastic. Appreciate that. Now, I, my... I read your... 
Oh, go ahead, Christine. No, I was just going to say, I read your... I read the excerpt that you sent over, and um, I noticed that it, it's it's rhyming. Now, do you rhyme all the time in your poetry, or do you? I do. Um, all do twenty. I tried words? to have yeah. rhyme, so I mean, I'm sure the syntax mm-hmm. is not exact, and so, some college English professor somewhere would slap my my <laughs> knuckles uh, with a you know with a, a ruler probably but I try to make it narrative poetry and then each sta- each two stanzas do rhyme yes mm-hmm. now, yeah I, I, I asked Christina, because, uh, are you taking you know, notes like, Christina because because what you're supposed <laughs> to rhyme my dear that's the whole point sometimes well, they okay, do you sometimes know, they don't my first yeah, no, 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 no. I'm going to have to start. Always... I'm going to have to correct you now. It has to rhyme. I, I studied poetry <laughs> in elementary school, and it's had to rhyme. That's what we were told. That's what Mrs. Rowley told us. It's got to rhyme. <laughs> and, so think, go. No, my first, yeah, my first uh, three books were, um, you know, rhyming, and I do, I do love to rhyme. And, you know, I have, you know, in some of the, the, um, the clicks that are, you know, that are on Facebook and they're, you know, the, the no, poetry, um, there's no, 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 so there's no they, clicks they have, on Facebook. Surely not. No. I, I know, right? They, no. They have, you know, looked down their noses on, like, you know, the rhyming poetry. You know, you know I've heard, you know, uh, comments before about, you know, it, you know, you, it, it's restricted because, you know, you, you have to, you know, work with words that rhyme. But to me, that always um, made it a little more challenging. You know, like if you had a word you really wanted to use, you know, sometimes you'd have to play with a sentence to try to figure out, you know, how we're going to get this to work here. And, and I don't know, to me, I, I love the rhyming. I did. But, I, you know, I did step out and uh, decide to write uh, some pre verse, which I fell in love with. But, um, you know, uh, the, the rhyming poetry is pretty much what I'm, I'm known for. So, um, you know, that it, it reminded me an awful lot of, um, you know, some of the stuff that, that I, I've written when I was reading your excerpts. And I was like... Yeah, because, you know, to be honest, I, I see so many uh, poets now, and I, I, I very rarely now see, see rhyming. And uh, so I do get a little excited because that's what I like to read is the, the, the rhyming. You know, I, I, I do. So, um, Patrick's, Patrick's made the effort, you know, um, and good on him. He did, yeah. <laughs> good on him. Well, he's made the effort to actually <laughs> to rhyme it, you know, so uh, you know, that's, that's, I, hats off to him. Well done, sir. Well done. Well, well, thank you, and, and you're <laughs> spot on, Extina. It is hard to sometimes you get really stuck when you're stuck on a word and then you're into your next mm-hmm. sentence and trying to find something that links in with it that does rhyme. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard, and if yeah. you can write a narrative story in the context of a poem and somebody's you know, left with mm-hmm. a good impression from that and it rhymes, I think you hit a home run out of the ballpark when you do that. And you're right, it is very hard to do. It is a lot easier uh, for me just to write free form and just write novels, novellas, and short stories and, and those type of things. So it was a bit of a challenge. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, speaking of the, um, the the poetry, and, and I, you have an excerpt for us. Would you Would you care to read it? Sure, I'd be yeah. happy to. So... You know, this is nothing that's new thematically, so this is something that you know you see in so many different movies. It's a proverbial haunted house, but I put my own little twisted, sick spin on it. So it, it's kind of a, a chronological order from the time it was built uh, up until it being dormant, vacant, and weeds overgrown, that type of thing, and all of the horrific things that happened in, be, in between is the, basically the body uh, of the poem, and, it, and it's titled very simply, The House. So, high on the hill, the house looms over the town. Wickedness and evil taint the walls and ground. Tragedy, murder, and suicide taint its past. No family residing there ever seemed to last. Three stories immense in scope and size. Stark windows looking as if they have eyes. Peeling paint, odor, decay, and grass too high. Gargoyle wind vanes reach up to the sky. Back in 17, when the horrible structure was built, Edgar Phillips swan dove from the roof over guilt. Horrible rumors in the 20s and 30s describe satanic rituals. Blood sacrifices demanded, making murder for occupants instinctual. Jason Murphy shot the heads off his wife and three kids in 44. Depressed and jobless, he killed them when back from the war. 
Old Man Murphy axed his wife to pieces on the floor in 54. Blood to this day still stains the old bedroom door. In 62, Tommy Cook hung himself in the basement. A popular boy and football star, it caused much amazement. Discovered by his baby sister, seeing the puffy purple tongue, she's resided in an institution since she was very young. Thelma Johnson roasted her husband in the fireplace in 72, taking his cooked flesh to the church social in a dish of fondue. Reverend Cochran mutilated four girls in the parlor in 87. Mumbling to police, voices told him it would get him into heaven. But the most hideous and heinous occurrence of all rocked the entire town in 98 during the late fall. Charlie Warner hacked and knifed his family to death. It was heavily reported he ate most of his sister Beth. The horrified police discovered the blood-soaked boy sitting in a corner muttering in a strange voice, clever and coy. Like others before, Charlie claimed he was led by voices, powerful dominant spirits who demanded their choices. Now the old house is empty, neglected, and dark, but auras of horror, blood, and terror are still quite stark. An unspeakable evil dwells in that house lying in wait. Beware you don't get caught in the grip of its fate. Wow. Yes, I, 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 I like that. That, that was, was a really, really good poem, but probably the worst real realtor sting ever <laughs> to be honest you, you, you wouldn't yeah. there I don't want to be who would buy that <laughs> funny enough actually that reminded me um alistair crowley's uh house is actually up for sale uh, oh my on the banks oh. of loch ness i was loch ness or loch, well, I think loch ness i think um and that that would be that would be worth being i have to say <laughs> sure I, I think so. Didn't Jimmy Page from uh, Led Zeppelin own that at one time? Because I know he was kind of into the whole Aleister Crowley scene and all that stuff when he was with Zeppelin. That wouldn't surprise me. I remember uh, a, a big fan my hero of mine, James Herbert, the, the, the British author. Um, he actually uh, he bought, he owned uh, a chair that was once um, owned by Aleister Crowley. Uh, and he, uh, whether it was him putting his spin on it, but he, he actually had it um, mounted up on the wall so nobody could sit on it because they didn't want, you know, uh, to, to anybody getting the evils off it. So, um, and he said he, he used to get like strange stain um, sort of under it on, on the floor. It turned out they just had a bit of damp. So it's like... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is funny. You know, the, uh, the Amityville, Amityville house always creeps me out. Now I know that they, you know, said that the first, uh, family, or actually the second, the Lutzes, they said that that was like a hoax, but the original story where, you know, uh, Ronnie DeFeo, Ronnie just DeFeo killed yep. all the, you know, his family mm -hmm. members. Well, that actually happened, that, didn't it? Yeah, he actually he, shot his family up. It's, yeah. You know, and, and the fact that they, they say that, you know, they were all face down in their bed. Now, okay, after the first gunshot went off, wouldn't somebody have gotten up or, or something? I mean, to me, that there was just something yeah. so sinister and so evil and, and awful about that whole story. Um, yeah. And they, they weren't oh, drunk, I don't drunk know. Drinking, were they? I mean, I guess they tested them for that. No, but, um, uh -uh. Yeah, that was just yeah. horrible, yeah. yeah. It's funny you say that because I wanted it to kind of take was. Amityville Horror and take this poem and take Amityville on steroids, basically, and have it much more vile and much yeah. more graphic, of course, so being horror, of course. Yes. <laughs> that's what I that's what I saw when I was when you were reading it. That's what I saw when you know the you know yeah, he hacked his family to death. I was like, Yeah, get him but you know, it's really creepy. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. What a what a what, now, a, what uh, a wonderful great world we inhabit as horror writers. <laughs> <laughs> you know it is, and I think it's a genre that transcends so many other genres. I I, I can think of no other writing genre that that really gets our psyche and the the whole fight versus flight type thing and that 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 fear we, we we're repulsed but at the same time we're we're kind of titillated we we want to know if the boogeyman's in the closet so we peek we we hear heavy breathing coming down the path in the park and we want to know if there's something there so we don't want to look but we can't help ourselves and force us to look so to me that's kind of the mm -hmm. essence of what horror is we 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 tap into you know uh, people's greatest fears, I guess. You know, so everyone's 
even as even if it's a, even as a small kid, everyone had a phase of being scared of the dark and the thing under the bed. And ultimately, you know, we, we're all terrified of death. You know, that that sort of um, float, floats around the periphery of the mind a lot of the time. Certainly, you know, certainly at my age, um, you know. So it, it is. It, it, it is almost universal. So, uh, and I think most people, even people who say don't like horror, I think that, like you say, they. They're the sort of people who slow down to see a car accident on the freeway. Yep. Yep, you're exactly yeah. right. And, of course, my wife Molly gets mad and says, oh, why can't you write, like, a, a historical fiction story or some type of great story where this guy mm -hmm. comes from Ireland and falls in love with a, a beautiful girl and blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I that could, shy. But, I mean, that would be shy. I, mean, I know, you know really. but I, I, <laughs> yeah. I want to write something that grabs the reader by the jugular and they can't help but want to flip the pages, you know? Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. you know, even with my, you know, like my own stuff, uh, Dark Musings, um, you know, I, I know that, like, my mom always wanted to know why couldn't I write, you know, nice, you know, happy poems and, and you know, and like, well, <laughs> you know, I... I, I and yeah, not that I, you know, not that I can't or not that I couldn't, but you know, it, well, number one, that for me, the the poems that I wrote in Dark Musings were almost like a purging. You know, I mean, it was like me getting out all the, you know, negative and all the the dark, you know, uh, uh, feelings or you know what have you. But um, so I I, I definitely see it that way. It can be very um, therapeutic, I think. Well, you know, I, I um, it and it makes is. people feel. I agree. It's like say if you're asking Ozzy Osbourne, you know, come you don't sing, you know, light opera. Um, it, it's the way <laughs> your, your brains. Want. I mean, it's the same. It's the same. Your white brains. Why? You know, I I couldn't write, a, you know, a, a historical romance any more than he, could, you know, Madam Butterfly. You know, but or he probably could. To be <laughs> honest with you, it would be different. Uh, and to be fair, I mean, I I I, I write. You know, I've written. Many different. I, I can actually write pretty much any genre, but I always come back to the horror and the dark stuff because that that's what that's what entertains me more than anything. It's like we, we yeah, mentioned you know, people, yeah. people, people, a lot of people I know getting excited about the new Marvel movie, the Endgame movie, and all the rest of it. And I'm me, I'm, I'm looking forward to the new uh, to the second part of it, for example. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Same here. But it's it just whatever grabs you. And they say, you know, write, write what interests you. And if that's what gets the heart racing, you know, that, that's that's what you should stick with. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I think so, it, um, I, if you think of money and commercialism, though, I'm amped. I'm trying to broaden things just a tad with some current projects, maybe a little more. You know, like what Stephen King did when he broke out from just sheer horror to adding certain other elements of stories like Shawshank and Green Mile and those uh, kind of things. Whether it whether it uh, it makes it or not is yet to be seen. But I'm I'm trying to uh, expand just a bit, and it, it's challenging to break out. Oh, definitely. I mean, to, to be commercial, I think romance is always going to be the biggest seller. But I I I've, I've tried romance and. <laughs> Always ends up being a murder in it, and it's like, no, Jim, don't, don't. I just stop it. <laughs> I can't yeah, I can't, can't do romance. Yeah, but when I say when I say extend, there's still elements of very graphic violence yeah. in the stories, but way, way, way more character development, much more of an in-depth, uh, intertwined plot that's a lot more exciting than just some of the sheer B-movie type horror things that mm -hmm. I've been writing. Well, funnily enough, I think the closest mm. to, I think, what I would call real romance, and it's in, it's in my anthology, um, uh, is uh, Zombie Hooker, a love story. And it is really, <laughs> to be fair, and it, is a, it is a little bit graphic, but it's a really sweet, post-apocalyptic, post uh, it's like in the aftermath of a zombie outbreak, etc. But it's a really... So I don't know. I don't think Steena's um, read it yet, but uh, it, it, it's in the audio book version as well. But it's a really sweet story, yeah. which makes you go, like, "Oh, you know, it, it's really sweet." You know, <laughs> oh. but yeah, it's got it's got zombies and it's got hookers in it, so that, that's as romantic as I get. I'm afraid. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wow. Mm. <laughs> 
So, um, Patrick, do you, have you um, always written poetry? Is that something that you've, uh, you know, always really um, always liked to do, or? I did. I, I wrote one to my parents back when I was in high school, and then when Molly and I were dating, I wrote her a lot of little lovey-dovey type poems. So it's kind of funny. We're talking about romance and our uh, aversion to it, yet I wrote all these little love poems and notes when we were dating, when we got engaged and all that kind of stuff. So I got a little bit of a knack for it. Then when they, I blended in horror, it made it even much more exciting. Yeah, definitely. And... um you know, it, it's funny. I, I had a friend one time who, you know, when he learned that I was a a, a poet, you know, he he was this um, he was a, an author himself. So it, it kind of, you know, was like, oh, I wish I could just write poetry. You know, you just a uh, uh, one page and you're, you know, the end. But you know, it's not always that easy. And and I also think with with especially with dark poetry, it can it can take a toll on you. Like it, you know, you you get in that frame of mind and it's not easy to always break out of it, you know? So, I mean, it's not as easy as I think people think it is. No, and I, there's a couple really nasty ones um, in this collection. One's called The Cage, and it's about a serial killer. And he is a cannibal yeah. and a necrophile. So he is a bad, bad boy and does some really nasty wow. things. Yeah. So there's, there's so, like I said, there's something in it, and these for everybody. So, uh, and then some of them were long. I wrote one about um, a medieval knight trying to kill this evil lord that was oppressing this fictitious town in Eng in northern England, and uh, that one's probably four pages long. So it goes. I mean, it is like wow. sixty to sixty lines. So that's kind of a little story within itself, but it every single you know, line rhymes, and that took a long time to do, but it was fun. Yeah, That's yeah. That's wow. Um, it really is. Yeah, I mean, you know, most of mine were, you know, 10 stanzas, I, you know, and, and that, that's all. But um, I do love the whole story within a, a poem. I think that's really, um, you know, uh, especially for the rhyming, it just reminds me so much of my own uh, poetry that uh, I, I I have to get my hands on this book. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, you know bum a free copy. You know, James does it. So, you know, oh, I'll send, you guys, I'll send you guys. I'll send you guys my Kindle uh, <laughs> uh, as soon as we as soon as we're done. You guys got you guys got a copy. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Yay! Yay. Thank you. Oh, you know, you, yeah, just, you are saying, shameless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it won't, it, it's, it's short, it's so thin, it won't take you long to read, so. <laughs> awesome. Poetry is something you kind of just got to, like, you know, just sink into anyway, you know, so I, I think that, uh, yeah, it, I, I can't wait, I really can't, I think that was a great, uh, the, the, the one that you read, The House, that was, uh, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, we need the story behind this house now. We need we need you to write the uh, the, the the book on this house because um, uh, that would be pretty scary. <laughs> that is so funny. You're not the first person who's said about several of the poems that they should be turned into stories, full fledged stories. It's really yeah. funny that you that you say that. So, so I will tell you one that was a spoiler <laughs> and it was very hard to write and it was emotional. And I don't know. I guess I got a. I saw the. If you guys remember the old movie, it was on Turner Classic one night, Fantastic Voyage, where the president has a problem and they miniaturize oh, these people in this mini one of my sub and they go and films, yeah. So my Sorry, father yeah. died from cancer. So I wrote a poem in here. It's not necessarily horror, but in a way it is, and it's called The Unseen War War. And about halfway through the reader of the poem realizes and because I make it sound apocalyptic, like you know, China is attacking the United States, or the the USSR has finally pulled the trigger and the bombs are going back and forth, you almost think it's a nuclear holocaust. But what it is is each city is a body part. So the twin cities of lung, the city of heart, the city of brain, and the marauding oh. horde that is invading it are cancer cells. And it's called the oh, unseen wow. war. And the reason that the I like that, that. And the reason the economy is tanking within that country, the country being the body, is because they had too much of the import of the of the product tobacco. So in other words, it was a smoker, mm -hmm. like my father, died of lung cancer, and 
It's called The Unseen War. So I, that one is a spoiler, and that was hard to write because I thought of him uh, the whole time, but it was kind of it's kind of different, I thought. But I, I'm shamelessly stealing a little bit from Fantastic Voyage. <sighs> That is uh, again. I mean, that was a, 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 I mean, it's funny actually that that has been parodied so many times. SpongeBob SquarePants actually did a parody of Fantastic Voyage. The did they really? Did. <laughs> yes, he did. Seriously, they they, <laughs> they shrunk down to go into. I think it is Squidward because he followed the read from his clarinet. So That's I. I <laughs> um, and they do that, and they shrink. Um, I know um, Simpsons definitely did. And I remember seeing that when I was probably eight or nine, and it was it blew me away. I mean, it was fantastic because they, they did another one there in a space with uh, Dennis Quay. Was it Dennis? One of the Quay brothers um, back in the eighties. Basically, that idea where they shrunk him down and sent him in somebody's body. Um, oh yeah, inner. I can't remember. It was, was a, and it obviously yeah. it was Ra- Ra- Raquel Welsh as well. I had a major crush on Raquel Welsh in, in, back in the day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Great, great. I love that idea. You know, it'd be nice to see that remade, but remade properly. I would agree. And I'm, I'm kind of digging a lot of those old things that I never had the chance to see uh, before. And, you know, a lot of the old Twilight Zone things, a lot of the old Night oh, Gallery yeah. uh, shows, Outer Limits. I've been checking a lot of that old stuff out. And they, the, the pi- I mean, Rod Serling was an absolute frickin' genius. He was. Uh, when, I, when I think about mm-hmm. it, just, just off the chart genius with his ideas. Oh, yeah. I mean, Is anybody uh, yeah, watching the new uh, Twilight Zone? I was about to say, yes, I am. And what do you think to it? Yeah. I'd say so um, far so good. I'm, I'm thinking of sending Jordan Peele my Bloodverse collection and say, hey, what do, you, what do you think of some of these short stories being episodes in the Twilight yeah. Zone? Boy, boy, wouldn't that be nice? I, I'm sure you uh, guys I, got short stories you'd like to send to him as well. Mm-hmm. Right, what I think is they have, um, uh, I think I've, I've mentioned this before, I mean, back in the 80s, they had the Twilight Zone with, with some big name directors and obviously bigger budgets and ruined it because it was, just, it was just too much. But with this new season, they've gone back, back to the Serling days of low budget, excellent writing, brilliant acting, um, and it works. It is, it's just absolutely mesmerizing. You know, and it's, they're not yeah, relying on um, lots of effects and all the rest of it. And it, it, the writing is phenomenal. I, hats off to to the people who made that. Yeah, I would agree. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I am. I mean, you know, I, I say that now. I mean, when I'm watching it, I'm like, yeah, this is good. I'm enjoying this. I, it gets over with. I'm, I'm liking it. Um, but I cannot tell you right now an episode, maybe the first one. The first one I thought was pretty cool, how the, the comedy thing and, Hopefully, you know, whatever yeah. you put out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was cool. I liked that one. I did. I thought that one's really neat. Um, yeah. And, well, there's, uh, there's been three so, now. I, mean, yeah, I actually like, watched the third one because obviously it's on tonight. I watched the third one earlier in the week and uh, the one the trying to get her son to college and the, the same cop. Get, and each time they tried something different, you know, because she got to rewind it. Um, you know, the same cop just kept popping up. It kept popping up, and and it was really well. again incredible. Not not a massive effects, but the acting and the writing was solid, absolutely. So yeah, well well done, those people. Well done. <laughs> That's I will said. definitely keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you working on now, Patrick? So I'm working on a story about a warrior who is hired by a rich conglomerate when they catch wind of a demon coming up from hell. And he has to go in and kill demons. And I want to turn him into a, a kind of a serial novel similar to maybe what you know uh, Patterson did with uh, Alex Cross, maybe what uh, Lee Child has done with the Jack Reacher type things. And if it flies, hopefully if the first one is well received, then I will do maybe – five to ten, depending on the popularity of the character. So I'm working on that. Nick Grabowski is just about to release uh, in June a second short story collection called Out of the Shadows, kind of a combination of short stories and novellas. There are a total of nine, some longer than others. And I'm also working on a mainstream detective thriller that I've been kind of stuck on for the last four years, about 200 pages into it, and I've got writer's block, so I have move to other projects and I'll bounce back to that one, probably read what I wrote and thought, what the hell were you thinking, you moron, and then totally redo it and re-edit <laughs> it and make it better. So, yep. 
<laughs> it happens. <laughs> and I, I got to do a martial yeah, arts one. I'm, I'm I'm doing a martial art one, and and I know this is digressing from horror, but it's called Honor Bound. And think of Shogun meets Ninja Assassin. If if you remember the oh, wow. series, I remember. So, that. Yes, I did. So that's the time period, and a group of ninjas were sent in to kill a rising political. A figure, but the man was not at home. So they killed his wife, killed his daughter, and the 18-month-old son they kidnapped. And they trained him 14 hours a day, very brutally, on all the different martial arts. And he became a master kenjutsu, and he could take a katana and, and cut two and a half from shoulder to hip through bone and everything with one blow. And he was the number one sought-after assassin in all of Japan. He's given his current assignment, and, he, wow. and he, when he's studying who the person is, you know, 18 years later when he's in his 20s and he's the highest paid assassin in all of Japan, he finds out that not only is the man noble, does things the right way, uh, that he is going to be good for Japan, but he then also finds out that he's actually his biological father. Oh, so wow. he's torn. Does oh, he have wow. allegiance to the clan and who raised him, or does he mm-hmm. now have a new allegiance to this very great eminent man who's his biological father? And, and the title of, the, of that story will be Honor Bound. I like that. That's I'll great. be looking for that. Yeah. I hate to say we're, we're out of time for our show. Um, it was so great to have you back. And, oh, um, great you too for me. To always, again. always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I would love to, anytime. Love to be with you guys. You guys are fantastic. Uh, you do a super job, and it's a true pleasure. Oh, thank you. We love you too. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm we'll afraid. We'll have you back soon, Patrick. All right, I'm afraid. You guys take care. And you, Patrick. Have a great rest of all what's left of the evening. We you guys yeah, do. totally run out of time. I'm afraid it's that time of the night, Xtina, where we have to say good night, Xtina. Good night, Xtina. Pretend you're happy when you're blue It isn't very hard to do And you will find happiness without an end If you pretend Remember anyone can dream And nothing's bad as it may seem Yeah.